apologize. Are we ready? Right. Can we start? We can start. I know we have we have some time constraints and we are um, down to four uh, because we have two commissioners who are out of town and one who is unwell. We're gonna I'm gonna push through and we're gonna try to um, touch on a lot of things. So the first thing on the agenda is um, reports from the ad hoc committees. And the first one is cultural districts, which uh, Deborah is the chair of, but she turned that um, responsibility over to her co-members. So you want to give a, a report out on what you what you started? And right, and I'll put this out for those that I handed out a uh, PowerPoint notes page, and what we were tasked with and correct, adjust, and edit as we go, if you would, Andy. We were tasked with was exploring the new concept of arts and cultural districts in the state of California. Um, Reading is, uh, just back up just a sec, it's a very complicated thing, it turns out. And the, art, the, uh, the legislature passed a law creating this arts and cultural district or cultural heritage, cultural districts in California about a year and a half ago and they whittled it down to 20 cities that applied and they will whittle it down to 10 for the first year of, for the first uh, rollout of 10 cities and towns across California. And uh, Reading is in the final 20. They spent quite a bit of money to produce a very great proposal. And what I've done here is to take their proposal, keep the highlights in it and then uh, uh, put a map that could tentatively be Chico. So I'm going to go through this really quickly. As you can see, here's the Reading map. And uh, and it, it the, the point is it has to be contiguous. And they, so they created a bike path that connected all these. Uh, there, so uh, mm -hmm. you've got just little windows open. So I don't well, want to touch something. There you go. Thank you. I, yes, I did. Yeah, thank you. I did not see that. Okay, so you've got the Reading District in the map, and you can see it in your handout. And there are about the final 20 cities and a list of them on the other page, and it's everything from Grass Valley, Whiskey Town, Lake, all the way up to, of course, you know, some of the largest urban areas in Southern California. San Francisco is not on that list. Uh, the Chinatown District is, I should say. But uh, it's one thing that they deal with is displacement is one of the primary things, primary, uh, anyway, we'll go through that. The legislation, a little bit of the uh, history is there, and due to time constraints, I won't go through it, but it's basically to attract artists, encourage economic development, encourage preservation, local uh, cultural development and uh, celebrating strengthening and opportunity without generating displacement. And that's a huge thing and somewhere that we could be very strong on as we go on. You know, San Francisco is the poster child for displacement these days and they are making that a central point. If you look to the back of your handout, by the way, we'll, there's a larger version of the map. And the smaller one here. The Arts Council shall decide, in, and I've already kind of described the process. And we'll go to the other. And there are three different types, really production, say Napa, but the Napa could also be all three, consumption and heritage. Um, Butte County could be consumption and heritage, could be a bit, a bit of each. They, I believe they actually hand the distinct, the district type out to something and label it as such. And then urban, rural, and suburban. Uh, ex uh, what makes for a successful district? Cultural districts, I lost track, oh well. I don't know if this is the same. 
missing a page. I am missing a page. So what makes us successful? Is any, for are you successful from, district, pre-existing destiny, cultural asset mapping, cohesive identity, multi-sector leadership, partnerships. Okay, here we are. Yeah, it doesn't. I may have gotten the one without the deletions. Okay, there's conception, heritage, and then what makes for a successful district, pre-existing density, cultural ma asset mapping, cohesive identity, multi-sector leadership, partnerships, data. What also makes for one is their geographical uh, uh, distribution. They don't want a cluster of them, and Chico is in a beautiful position for that as a strong asset of being halfway. If Reading does get it, which I think they have a very good chance of doing it, Sacramento will end up with one probably and maybe somewhere else, but on for the next go round, which will be coming up in another couple years, Chico could be an appropriate selection. Destination, inclusive development, imprimatur, which I had to look that up and I put that down there for you. Official license, it is a person's acceptance or guarantee that something is a good standard. So being selected as one translates to funding, technical assistance, and uh, advertising, a lot of group advertising, rather than a hundred different websites to go through. You go to the California website and then select where you're going and boom, we're there. You couldn't ask for any better. Yeah, my simplistic approach when we came to this, I thought it was just a billboard on the side of a highway and maybe an inclusion in a uh, ad campaign. It turns out to be far, far more complicated than that and costly. Uh, Reading put was it ten or twenty twenty five thousand was twenty to start twenty to twenty five thousand dollars to get their proposal together and they had a major funder behind them and they had a major funder behind them um, this is not, not working for us so to move on cultural so there's more details that we have as we. Uh, I think in a broad way, I have covered many of those. And so we end up there. The status now is that after they select these 10 and figure out what, they, they don't, there's still a lot of unanswered questions and undefined standards for the districts. And they are going to actually work those out live with the final 10. And these people have to move fast. They want to report what by the end of the year, Correct. the first year. Yeah, it's my recollection. Yeah, they want to report by the end of the first year so they can prep, start preparing for the next 10 or 20. They don't even know the number that is appropriate for the state of California. That will be part of the first year's study. I mean, so, how many they pick out of the 20 who yeah. are left? Right. Yeah, they may. They may. I think I got the the uh, opinion that they were going to open it right up, but they weren't just going to roll to the next 20. 40 people, 40 towns, cities applied initially. They would have lived down to 20, and then they'll do 10. And am I right in that it's recognition by the state as a cultural district, but the, right now there is no California Arts Council grant money that follows. Basically, they're giving you the, the, the award, the honor, but the funding for your support has to be provided right by the city or by a philanthropist or foundation or whatever you whatever source you have to fund it that's that is correct and ongoing funding is still up in the air there may be funding like there would have to be staffing for for such an entity and that would have to be supported by the community mm -hmm. and th it they from what we learned here is they have not closed the door to this being an avenue for funding Right. It is not initially as part of the study. You know, they could allocate monies in the future that could help with this. But the bulk uh, marketing, and it's supposed to pay for itself. It's supposed to be a better than sustaining program with money that you infuse into it, you get back in taxes and in local uh, tourism dollars in a greater amount. Of course, that's yeah. That's where I think our next steps are twofold. I mean, one is. Um, 
course, to follow what's happening on the current applications and ultimately try to get a sense of who's funded and why. Or we'll know who's funded, but why. I mean, there may be some politics on that, but what, what's a working application, what's not a successful application in terms of money, uh, funding for it, and, and I don't know, that, to look for things that may be transferable to Chico, you know, in terms of this was successful somewhere else, at least on paper, it should be successful here. And I think the other thing, and so that may mean we just really wait a while for that, because that's going to play out. But I also think it's, um, I don't think it's too premature to start looking for partners, because ultimately I think a successful application, you need people from the business community, you need public institutions, could be the city, could be the university, could be some other quasi-public nonprofit. I'm not sure which that would be right now. Uh, but they, she you need said partners. That was a requirement which I left out of my description, thank you, that the requirement is as an official entity like the city, a major cultural entity like Chico State, and then a third like quasi-public which the Chamber or the Downtown Business Association would qualify. So typically there are about three partners. Now Reddings was 25, I'm sure Weaverville was not 25,000. You know, so there's, it's a scalable right. thing. And uh, there were, oh, one thing I didn't talk about was our map that we settled on is, goes from the North Esplanade right about at the creek coming down the historic boulevard because that would include some galleries, the new museum, the science museum, um, the Bidwell Mansion and all of that. Then opening up into the university and the whole downtown core. It's appropriate and all this is contiguous. And the, the big trick, the big draw here is the Park Avenue. Park Avenue 10 years ago did spent, I think, to the tune of millions of dollars to renovate and try and create the new business district down there by putting in the medians, the public art, the Arts Commission was a part of that. And last I looked, one of the larger chains had just pulled out uh, O'Reilly's auto parts, moving out to the 20th Street Mall. Mm -hmm. And what is happening 10 years later, it, it was a complete failure, which is a bad economic thing, but it also gives us a contiguous, rich place to expand into without displacement. People, I, I've encouraged 1078 Gallery to look out there. Art, live in art studios to go out there. There's so many empty spaces that cultural, that, that, that is our expansion zone and is thus in the map. Okay. So we can hold that out as a positive economic growth thing for the city of Chico, and that would be why DCBA or the chamber mm -hmm. would go on board is to try and get more tax money out into that strip that's barren at this time. Um, and we, may, we probably may not or may not make it into the next round, but there would be a third round. Yeah. We, we need to, it's a very long-term thing we need to think about now. So uh, my question, are there, are, there, are there immediate action items? Are there next meetings planned for the ad hoc committee? Or what's the, what's the next? The next meeting has not been planned. The immediate action items were, I had them on that piece of paper. We, I discussed a little bit with you. You emailed to me. Yes, and it is right, right. not here. Right here. There it is. Thank you. I did print it. It's there. Mapping the ass, mapping the area, which we've done loosely, but we come up with a tighter mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, mapping the cultural aspects of the area. Who is there and what? So creating uh, an inventory of uh, items that would make this a rich candidate for this type of designation. Discussing partners and then talking about the tangibility of the neck of the two year possibility whether when we next meet about whether okay. looking at this in two years is even remotely a possibility All right thank you sure. and our meeting hasn't been selected yet um any questions we're going to move on to funding the funding ad hoc committee my turn your turn five minutes let's see okay well hi um well the funding uh the Ad Hoc Funding Committee uh, met on um, May 3rd. Uh, President had to meet with myself, Mary Gardner, Tammy McKenzie, uh, Monica McDaniel, and Cameron Kelly. I thought not present, and I apologize, was Ginny Crawford because I forgot to tell her. Uh, but um, so I just want to acknowledge 
because this committee is open. We want to think about we want members from the public to participate. Um, so that was our first meeting uh, uh, on May 3rd. Uh, to jump to the end, our next meeting is scheduled for July 30th at 11.30 a.m. at my house. And I will send that information to you. Uh, July 30th, Sunday, July 30th at 11.30 a.m. Um, our sort of our goal right now, to the extent we have a goal, is to have a have a proposal to recommend to the, the council by June of 2018, in about a year. That's what we thought was our shortest realistic time frame. Translate, it may take longer, <laughs> but June of uh, 2018. Um, what we've done so far, uh, and this is really thanks, uh, initial thanks to Debbie Preston, who put out a my request, basically the city clerks of California, like do you have an ordinance like this in place? Uh, and we got replies uh, from Salinas, Palo Alto, Sunnyvale, Capitola, Loma Linda, Cupertino, Lawndale, Berkeley, and Oroville. And I know that there is a, there's something in place in Orland as well, though we haven't gotten a formal reply yet. So we know this animal, this entity, meaning a percentage, a fee uh, on development private development to be dedicated towards the arts. Uh, it exists in California. It's alive and, and I hope well. We're not sure if it's well, but we want to find out. It's definitely alive. Uh, also, thanks to Cameron Kelly. Uh, Cameron uh, from the Chico Art Center, she created a Google Doc uh, and also tutored me on how to access a Google Doc, something I had never done before, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and on that Google Doc is posted the ordinances or the city policies from these eight cities. We can add more. Uh, the minutes from the meeting are on there, uh, sort of our action plan. Um, so that's the way we'll be able to participate, and I'll get that information okay. to you. Okay. Or I'll make sure Cameron, yeah. maybe you have access to Google Doc, okay. but okay. Uh, so um, we've gathered a lot of information so far. So our action plan now is to try to really sift through and analyze what we've got. Uh, I don't think we really need any more ordinances, although I want to track down Orleans just because it's in our neighborhood. But we want to analyze um, what's been done already, and, and both locally and elsewhere. In terms of what's been done already, and actually Ginny may be able to help on this at our next meeting, um, well, Mary Gardner was going to research her archival records uh, and a thumb drive she thought she had as to what the Arts Commission had done already right. in terms of a work product. And you were on that committee, I think. I wrote it. You wrote it. So you may have it. Yes. So there we go. Yeah, that'll, may be, that, that'll be faster. Uh, so uh, we'll be in touch. And you, you'll be, uh, that's in terms of uh, a proposal of what was really ready to go, or well, it was pretty much ready to go. And then the, the plug got pulled on it. But still, we'd like to know what, what happened so far. Um, um, Sammy was going to check the American for the Arts Council just to check out how many ordinances of this type there were in California. Not to get more, just to have an idea of scope, how widespread, mm -hmm. how much is this tool being used. I think we have enough exemplars of the tool, but we also want to know um, really engross how many were out there. Uh, and then our next action, which is really just barely, or proposed action, I put underway in quotes, uh, is for each of our, our committee members, whether um, Arts Commission or or a public member to take an ordinance uh, and analyze it in terms of what did it do, what did it produce for that city, you know, what type of ordinance was it, was it a fee on square footage, uh, did it go into a fund, was there an in lieu fee, meaning the, what the fee would be, would it, uh, would you have to spend it on a development project or could it be paid into a fund to be used somewhere else, uh, what was the nature, the, the summary of the ordinance, uh, and um, did it work? What did it produce? How was that money used? How did it play out? So we can have an example of, again, what worked elsewhere, what maybe didn't work elsewhere, what was the end result? Um, and we have two or three ordinances assigned, and that's on the Google Doc, but by next meeting, we're all gonna have an ordinance and we'll ask people to re report, research that and report back. I also want to research, and I, I, took, I said I would do this, although I haven't started yet, is um, to find out what would have happened in Chico if we had an ordinance four years ago or eight years ago, like a 1% or 2% ordinance on square footage of private development, how much how much money would that have raised? What have we missed out on, uh, at least mm -hmm. conceptually missed out on? Um, so that's sort of our plan of action. Our next meeting will be um, to summarize where we're at. Uh, hopefully by then we may have the information of what happened before. We'll, we'll basically it'll be um, pushing enthusiasm to research 
the other ordinances, gather the information, uh, and hopefully we will be able to continue to bring that back and summarize it, and uh, hopefully a year from now have a, a proposal to get to the full council. Um, next meeting, July 30th, 11.30 a.m. That's where we're at. Is that five minutes? It's great. It's good. It's concise. Much better than I did. Okay. Thank so you. I can shoot you. I I can find it very quickly. The Orland, I believe, the Orland proposal is buried in their uh, municipal code, and I think it's online. I can't remember if I actually. I'll try to help I'm you. I'm mindful out of taking up your time. If you can find it and send it to me, I can get okay, it posted to Google Doc. Because you're probably better at digging through municipal codes than we are. And unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it's riveting stuff. So. <laughs> Well, while you're at it, how do you feel like um, maybe we should meet? We're researching um, over the past, uh, well, since 2012, for example, how many square footage of commercial development has there been in Chico on a yearly basis? Um, so we can sort of apply conceptually a 1% or a 2% ordinance to that total. Uh, I probably can get those statistics because they were provided, um, especially in light of the recession that hit us a little later. When we started addressing it, we were down to less than 100 building permits being pulled a year, where before, historically, much, much, much higher. So during that, that was the time frame maybe because we did the layoffs in 2013. So I'm not sure that's the window you want to look well, at. However far back you want, if you want to go back 15 years or 20, I mean, I don't know how difficult it is to get in terms of reports, but okay, let me it'd be, see if I I, it'd be good to see how it's trend. Whatever it is, back. I think we're trending up, and it'd be good to know. Yeah, those those are pretty miserable four years to to right. To you look can just at. pull some select select years every you now, like this one, and then oh. a four year break. You can pick a base year 10 years ago or from. I'll example. see what they have because maybe. Yeah. I would think that there's a document that captures from year to year what it is because they often tell council number of permits and how many square foot of uh, right. space, right? Right. So I'll check. It gets reported. The question is finding it. Mm -hmm. On Thank the you. Orland thing, I remember you gave a pretty detailed report at one point on the Orland model. Um, well, I probably lost in. It wasn't attached to that staff report because if you recall the council had actually directed to change the direction. Mm -hmm. Originally we were going to look at the Orland and then the, the council majority directed that we okay. go with a regional approach. So I didn't do a lot of research but uh, I did read it and I, so I might have it. Oh, that's what I wondered if it was yeah. that simple. One question, you've talked about where it's coming from a lot. Was there discussion in your committee about what the money, about a favor or a direction on where the monies would be used potentially, or is that still what you're going to study? Well, I, I think that would still be studied, but certainly no recommendation. I mean, I mean, some of the ordinances did not have an in-lieu fee, meaning the money was paid into a fee and you could spend it elsewhere. So by definition, that money would have to be spent on the project itself. If, uh, you know, your, your private development has to have 1% towards public, towards art of some type. Just the way there's a landscaping and lighting components. Uh, others create a fund, in which case then that could raise money to be spent elsewhere. And like an organization. We haven't weighed in, weighed in yet. Uh, okay. And frankly, I wasn't thinking of weighing in yet on how the money should be spent, just creating the funding like mechanism. Right. But we could weigh in. That's premature. Yeah. A little bit. Maybe in October. Any other questions or comments for the that one? Okay. Um, so arts facility, and that's me. Um, so we had a meeting, Mark Edson, uh, Denver Latimer, uh, Slow Theater, Deborah Lucero, and myself. Um, we asked ourselves some, some pretty broad questions to start off with. What does an art center in Chico, this was the facility, arts facility meeting. Um, what does an art center in Chico look like? Um, who is this facility for? What does this facility center support? Who are the people and the organizations that partner to make a project happen? Um, so facility, we just put out what people tell us and what we hear they need, and that's space. Um, whether that's a black box theater, a proscenium theater, 100 to 200 seats, 300 to 400 seats, 1,200 to 2,000 seats, 
gallery, visual art space, maker space, studios, labs, rehearsal space for dance, theater, art, um, outdoor performance space, meeting space, conference space, communal space. Um, so then we came to strategies. Um, ultimately, we believe that uh, some kind of arts facility needs assessment would be would be needed and recommend would recommend a consulting firm be hired to do that um, to assess the community need capacity all the way to you know location and, and things like that um, part of this would be to the other presentation cultural mapping of the community our assets um, both within the city of Chico and Butte County because you think that people outside the city would also use this space um, identify model communities who have successfully developed cultural plans that have led to facilities um, and then identify the partners the friends the, collab the collaborators the funders um, so we um, you know we, we also discussed you know the need of building space or repurposing space um, you know how how grand, how big do we think um, when we do this? Uh, when do we, you know, and, and then we start dreaming about spaces that are already available, or what, what's going to happen to the mall when J.C. Penney's closes or whatever. Um, so the next, the immediate next steps, I think, for the committee, um, we, we said we needed to invite um, some additional members to join um, to help us fill in some gaps. And so, um, to date, uh, um, uh, Mark Orm, uh, city manager, has agreed to, to come and participate. Um, uh, we, we felt we need a, a, a musical presence on it, and so Josh Hag uh, from Uncle Dad's Art Collective, but they were a great one because they perform in such varied spaces. They performed in Laxon, they performed at the Big Room, they performed at Cafe Coda. Sort of hit it all, um, and we invited um, uh, uh, Pat Macias at Monca to um, come and participate with us to help uh, round that out, and she's accepted. And um, we have invited a, um, I'll, I'll leave this person unnamed until they accept, but a developer builder in town um, to give sort of the perspective of, you know, what it costs to, to flesh out a space and build a space. Um, so that's that's where we've done. Um, we're looking at trying to acquire studies or um, from successful arts facility projects that we know about. Um, uh, we've reached out to a few, uh, trying to look at like-sized communities. Um, also uh, looking at a couple of um, planning and research firms to see sort of their you know because they always put out portfolios of successful projects they've done. So we've looked at um, AMS planning and research, Wolf Brown, and some other arts facility planning research um, firms. And then we also said we would avail ourselves of um, American for the Arts has a cultural planning uh, piece on their website. Uh, we haven't set our next meeting. Um, we're still hoping that we get one more person to join our happy band. Here we are. Thank you. Were, were there any uh, ideas that came, or did this happen afterwards from that the whole, uh, what was it, uh, Bill Broward's program and the whole uh, Healthy Bodies uh, sports facility that they're studying right now, which is basically a larger scale of what you guys are doing, but for sports. For sports. And, for sports, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, but we're aware about, we're aware of it. Um, one one of the interesting things about that that plan is it's not within the city limits of Chico, right. um, and they got consultants. To, they were going to consultants with the feasibility and survey yeah, what people need. Feasibility knew. study. It and really it's a, is a nice model. Maybe. Yeah, it's an interesting private, uh, you know, foundation funded, but um, the foundation will partly get its funding from the commercial rental of of the space that it owns. If this whole thing. Out. Um, so it's a, it's sounds a, like an in lieu fee of another name within that complex. <laughs> so um, it's a, it's an interesting. It, uh, the little I know about it, um, it's an it's an interesting. Model.
model to um, have multi-purpose sports facilities. Mm -hmm. Facilities, plural, because it's fields, outdoor and indoor. And, uh, so we, we did talk about it, but just that much because nobody collectively we knew about that much. Yeah, it's still... <coughs> All right, so we're moving on. Um, do we have a cultural tourism and marketing? That was Tammy. Tammy Todd and myself. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give the report for that one? We met and we kind of got organized, but. I think uh, the focus is, I think Tammy was going to do the report, but the focus yeah. is, uh, is the small term. Uh, well, I saw being on both the cultural uh, districts subcommittee and Jackie's on the committee also. Yeah. Oh, right. Jackie was there. I saw it as a con with both meetings side by side as a compatible. The cultural districts is the large view looking out on the large scale, right. whereas the cultural tourism and marketing is the short term, quick, uh, much more uh, tangible uh, committee. We came up, unlike the cultural district, where it's just a huge, complex thing, we, we came up with very simple things. One is we need to link websites. Uh, City of Chico needs to update its website with events and, uh, and or at least galleries and public art, linking them with the DCBA and the chamber. Chamber and the and the DCBA are severely lacking in their arts and culture representation, and uh, it became much more a tangible, simple thing as connecting with these people, trying to see what we can do in those areas in the short term, while the arts district works for the long term. Right. Okay. That's and and approaching organizations to say, you know, can we create a link instead of trying to have a different organization like the city do an arts website, more like. If people go to the city, then who can we link them up to that's already doing this kind of work? So mm -hmm. just trying to figure out resources. And I think that dovetails into the next agenda item, which is arts liaison. Is that correct? Mm, no? Not so much. Okay. Because um, we were talking about having people um, be liaisons to, like the DCBA. Right. And like the chamber. And you know, if, in the Art Commission, we've been talking about that for a long time. Um, we were also talking about that in the Chico Arts and Culture Foundation because we want to promote our tours, we want to get our brochures into hotels and things like that. So there is an overlap from this work. In a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, in, in each of these committees dovetails, dovetails some way into right. the others. Um, were there specific uh, next meeting or action items that you that you were going for? You just need to get get down to another meeting and talk some more get down to another meeting and, and this is almost where the liaison comes in if there's oh there may be overlap but to actually uh, Tammy was going and uh, Jackie. Jackie were going to actually meet with some with DCBA okay and some others to to start just you know putting the feelers out there and see what was see what what the interest was and uh, start uh, building on what it is that we would do okay and follow up with another meeting great um, so that brings us to arts liaison. That was Did your, I hand that out yet? That your, uh, not a, yet. Uh, no. It's. Uh, I just. This is just. This is a long term. Uh, this is just a long term idea that I just. At this point, I would like to see if there was even any. If, if there was interest in following up on it. That's number one. Number two. How is the list? Number three. Perhaps we. If we do want to follow up on it. Uh, we come back in the next meeting having already joined or with a list of who we would like to join. It's simple as that. It's just not necessarily becoming, for example, Chamber of Commerce, not, ne not necessarily becoming a member, but occasionally attending their meetings and as, an, as outreach. I mean, the city, is the city a member of the Chamber of Commerce? We are a member, yes. Then we are already yeah. members. And that member that we did? Yeah. And we are doing right So, and I didn't get P bid on here. Um, the property owners. Uh, oh, when they just passed. So that should be on here too. So that that's it. it pretty simple. I just like to either I'd not. I don't want this item to get lost. 
uh, unless there really is so much going on elsewhere that we don't have the ability to do this. But if we do have the ability and desire to do this, I wanted that to be decided tonight, if we could. And I think it's an appropriate time to mention this. A um, uh, family member, member uh, friend was visiting Chico for graduation, and this person happens to be an architect, one of the architects who originally did the bear. And he noticed that they were redoing um, La Salle's. He, he could see from the outside, he said, you know those, those board, the posts that are in the front, that those are historical, that, and he could explain what they were and all this stuff. He said, does your town have, I said, yeah, we have an architectural um, and historic preservation board. He goes, and this person is from Pasadena. He said, you guys need to have a landmark board to um, go through block by block and take note of these historical landmarks because like the, like the construction that's going on in LaSalle's, they don't know what it is. They just like the metal posts, they're gonna cover them back up and they won't realize that they're an actual huge part of the infrastructure there. And they said, okay, well, I'll mention it. <laughs> so I think it's an appropriate time to mention it since Todd brought it up because we used to have a liaison between the Architectural Review Board um, to the Arts Commission and because there is an overlap there. And so um, I don't know if there's a possibility to weave that back in or whatever, but you know, it, it seems like it's important historical landmarks could get lost if we don't start noticing these things. So yeah. is, is the goal that we think is to have a, meet, have a meeting where all um, seven of us are present and go down the list and assign? Divvy up the top seven or 14 major ones that we're able to go to. Yes, okay. that would so, be the goal. So um, do we need to flesh out the list anymore or then we just say at our next meeting and, and um, Debbie and I talked about a possible special meeting um, which she's willing to help out on to, uh, in between now and our October meeting. That would be great because of the low turnout yeah. for this one. So um, is there anything? Yeah, how about you, you do, I can send you this file, you could distribute it to us, we could add to it and bring mm -hmm. ideas at our that. next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then, and then, go ahead. Excuse me. Um, so the DCBA, I contacted after our last regular meeting, I contacted the Chamber of Commerce to see if they had uh, a partner joint meeting with DCBA. They do not. However, both of their board meetings are open to the public, just like a lot of our mm -hmm. our items. And so, um, I think I forwarded that information to you, Todd, regarding DCBA and uh, Melanie Bassett's information and Katie Simmons' information. So, uh, you're more than welcome to send a, a person designated to be the liaison to those. And, that, and that's where the overlap occurs a bit with a couple of our committees. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no point in having two art commissioners going to this, per, you know, one of the ones perhaps from our committee that was already going to work with them yeah, would right. be appropriate for that. Okay. Yeah, I definitely think the full commission, or at least a few more commissioners should be here yeah. before we start dividing this up. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a little thin tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll put this I, on. I have a comment. Oh, sure. It, it appears to me that what you're talking about is the commission, you going out to those areas, but what I'd also like you to think about is having those areas send people here. We are here because we represent not only the public, but other arts commissions. You should have 20 of us here, mm -hmm. each of us representing at a time when you're doing your business so that we can take your information back to our commissions. I, I think that would be a much more economical use of time. You need to encourage participation in your audience of members from the various arts group, which is the opposite of what this is about. Yeah, I could see both being of Good value, yes. Right. Because we need to see them working on their own turf. Um, you know, but, not, but it's true that not all of those meetings are open to the public. Right, but the, the major ones, and we don't need to become members per se, but definitely yeah. attending, being visible, mm -hmm. and seeing what they're going through is of great benefit, not just to them, it's a benefit to us to see mm -hmm. what they're going through. And then through actions like that, perhaps we can get more attendance here. At our last meeting, we had a lot of notice and following up on the state of the arts. We had a decent turnout here last week. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked about that at the beginning of this meeting that I need to do a little more uh, advanced notice of our meetings. And but that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. And so um, t along with that, thank you for reaching out to the DCBA and the Chico Chamber. Um, and do we, 
is it appropriate for us to get on their agendas, even though they're open to the public, or should we, or should we even let them know ahead of time that we're coming, or should we just find out when the meetings are and just kind of go and tell our people to go? Or I think, um, and then maybe invite them from inside of that capacity. Let's see, I might have only sent. I maybe mean, I sent this only to Todd, but in the back page is the information for the Chico Chamber. Okay. Uh, joint meetings, they don't have it, but um, here's the information. Okay, thank you. And so I think, you know, in terms of getting on their agenda, obviously you would have to notify them that you would like to be on the agenda. I, not knowing where you want to go, you may want to make some type of an introduction and, and indicate why you're attending, but uh, they are open to the public. Typically, it's their own agenda, so you would have to call them to see how to get something added okay yeah, yeah. And, and also trying to figure out a meeting to go to where there's not a bunch of other stuff like is your agenda light this time okay great then I'll show up and you know, I, to the floor or whatever I, I, I understand your question but I see this very much it, it's not about us it's about it, it, it's a, we have to start working on their turf learning what they do mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that's how you form alliances you don't necessarily invite people over that's great but you go to them you create a relationship there then you become a known face you become a known body it becomes a relationship then you start pulling those relationships to us as we have the need for a project or a uh, uh, support or what have you okay so, so good there we'll we'll put this we're going to flesh out the list and we're going to put it on the next agenda for the special meeting yet to be determined um so is there a, a quick update on the hands i did i spoke with uh eric gustison who's the director of public works operations as you are aware the council did fund that um the the kink in the process was that typically with a governmental agency we have to do bids we have a request for proposals we have to usually receive three bids and that kind of thing so that threw a little bit of a wrench in it uh, oh, yeah. and so the way that eric is working with that is to see um, the vendor that's going to provide the service that has the expert expertise to do the specific work on those tiles on the hands uh, is actually uh, already a service provider to the city of Chico. So we're looking at a way of incorporating that in under mm -hmm. the existing contract. So we, because we missed having three bids. So when we go out to seek a service for a repair of an art piece, we probably need to get more than just one bid. We need to receive at least three is what we're required. Um, is, but there, is there a sole source rule? There is a source, sole source, um, and so I don't, and I, since the um, Chico Arts and Cultural Foundation was the one who actually identified that provider, I don't know what went into that. I don't know if you sought others and there were absolutely no service providers in the area. There were, because it's Terrazzo, it's a, it's a highly specialized work. Right. But and that's, knowing that we need three bids, next time we'll just go to Sacramento and that can be incorporated and maybe they'll say, oh, well, because we have to travel from Sacramento, whatever. The additional cost. Yeah. The other, uh, the other very quickly uh, little glitch that we had was that, as you will recall, we had received a proposal uh, for a set amount, I believe it was $4,900, and uh, I took it to council for a $5,000 award. When we reached out to start the preparation for the contract, uh, initially, the service provider indicated that the cost of materials had gone up substantially and so they needed more money. And I knew I only had obtained uh, approval by council for 5000 mm -hmm. So that was another thing that Public Works was working on with the service provider. I believe that that has all been taken care of. They are, if, if they can use it under our existing contract with the, the janitorial service, then we will be able to get it started immediately. Okay. So I don't have a definite date, Okay. but I did get that update today that um, Eric believes that there will be a way to incorporate it in under the existing contract. And if push comes to shove, I'll do a sole source that just requires a city manager. 
signature. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because the Chico Arts and Culture Foundation wants to raise money for stuff. So if it needs more money, let us know. <laughs> so okay. We'll do whatever we can. All right. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And so that's just something that we should keep in mind. If, if you're going to continue to look for uh, repairs, we need to think about, you know, contacting a number of. And that's pretty standard. Do we have to contact, or can we just post that we're accepting bids for a project, and then if two come in, only two come in? Right, and that's and that's fine. It, it just depends because we have a private group handling it. Right. Um, they aren't bound by the same rules and regs that we are, and so it would be up to uh, the foundation to seek perhaps maybe three bids. Sure. We're doing this. You wouldn't have to do a formal request for proposals like I have to do for the technology upgrade. Mm -hmm. But in you know, as we move forward and we look at different pieces that need to be repaired, bringing the cost, but also bringing that we did a you know we did a request for bids or we opened it up for bids and this is what we received. Right, and I that's due diligence. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Okay. I think that would work fine for our process. Um, that sort of dovetails into what might be our next restoration project. I know that we had we were presented with a, mm -hmm. a list of those things that were there. There it is. Do you have? Do you need one? Um, I don't have it on me. But you do have one. Um, I do have one. Because we have done more. I think we're uh, pretty close to finishing them now, and this is the latest one. So my question is: Do we need to identify the thing that is of most need and start the bid process mm -hmm. just to? Just to, to move this forward. Just to keep going yeah. on that. Yeah, I think that would be yeah. great. Yeah, and so I believe that was Diamond Alley. It, it was the Diamond Alley because yeah. they're falling down. And Diamond Alley, Silver Plow, and the John Muir Luminary Bench were the three um, in most dire need uh, that were labeled as urgent because they have literal pieces falling off of them. Now, thanks to an unnamed art commissioner who went out to the Silver Plow, picked up the falling down pieces. That's not falling down anymore. But the Diamond Alley. Even during, from tour to tour, we would notice more, more tiles missing. So we're not sure if people are jumping up there and, and chipping them off. And also on the capital, the green capital, um, it appears to be ceramic, and there are chunks that are missing. So you'll go on one tour and there'll be a chunk there, and you'll go on the next tour and another chunk's missing. So we're not sure if it's because of vandalism. Or it's pretty high up there, or if with the with climate changes, the expansion and contraction of the metal that's underneath it, sure. if it's just if it's just kind of coming and going. So, yeah, so that's that's probably the next one. Um, what is the process? Do we do we do we request we do we request bids just as a you know putting our toe in the water here, or do we? Well, I think um, I can look up the exact verbiage of the motion. Uh, I believe the council indicated that they would approve this, approve the repair of the hands, but they wanted a complete inventory done. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we probably need to have Eric Gustafson at the next meeting or the next time we talk about this because as those art projects are created, they become the responsibility of the city. And there really wasn't, there, well, their funds were not set aside for ongoing maintenance or repair at all. Much, much to our dismay as well as to all of our city facilities. We have had, we, we do not have funds available to do all of these up, updates. So I think that we need to get Eric's staff involved in looking at how do we incorporate, how do they start budgeting? Because while I, I think it's, it's in, awesome that the cultural the arts and uh, cultural foundation is willing to help fund it and we may need that and we may need to rely on that uh, I think that the, the council wanted to look at it holistically what are what are what do we have out there in terms of our pro, our art projects and and maybe getting an estimate of overall do we need two hundred thousand dollars to bring everything up you know what I mean mm -hmm. all the I mean, obviously, we need to look at it uh, collectively, but also individually. And I think it would be best to maybe hear from Eric how that process works for the public works, since this is a, considered a facility that falls under his bailiwick. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, I just just to let you know that uh, during the budget process that just got uh, was just finished, 
one of our council members made the motion to actually allocate uh, $10,000, I believe, mm -hmm. to additional repairs, and I don't believe it received a second mm -hmm. and, and didn't move forward. So there isn't any funding allocated in this new budget that just began July 1st uh, for any repairs. Mm -hmm. So I think getting Eric involved and perhaps having him yeah. here, and I did forward that list on to the full council okay. and to Public Works, but if you have an updated one, I think it's important to keep apprising them of the conditions. Would, so, it, would it help to keep moving this forward if um, rather than to have the whole commission be part of this to also create sort of a little ad hoc that could work with them and sort of like you know if it's two commissioners and 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 eric's area mm -hmm. and, and, the and the foundation sort of coming together to to sort of suss this out and and say these are the priority projects this is the whole thing part of that is we need to talk about uh, the deaccession of, of a few pieces because I understand that the plow is um, a con candidate beyond repair um, mm -hmm. and with design flaws and, and some other things. Yeah. So so I think we need to sort of lay out the entire um, thing, but rather than do have whether rather than have that working session be part of the entire commission's mm -hmm. time, can we send two commissioners, the foundation, and Great. somebody from Eric's group to. Have that uh, I think the commission, uh, when the concept of as agendized, perhaps I think the commission, if, if it wants to, could take the position now that um, here's the list as identified by the Arts and Cultural Foundation, and we as a commission say this is a number one priority that should be addressed next. I, mean, I think we can make that decision now. Myself, I mean, just so if there is an ad hoc meeting, we don't need to revisit it in October. Uh, right, I don't think it would be for the purpose of public works determining whether or not Diamond Alley needs to be repaired first. I think they're, they're going to rely on the experts right. and uh, to tell them since you know you've already done all the research. So I don't I don't see right. that being an issue. I don't know I, if we needed to uh, technically agenda. I mean, it's actually take a, a vote formal and to say this is a our formal vote. Decision. We yeah. believe that Diamond Alley is the next project to be worked on. And let the ad hoc and the run with and that foundation the, run with that decision. Right, because I think that what will be very difficult if we take these requests um, sporadically outside of the budget process, I think the council will say, you know, we asked for a holistic list. We've got that list. Um, I think that if Eric meets with, or his crew meets with um, that ad hoc group, and the Diamond Alley is the number one, and we think that the estimate is $7,500. Um, I believe that there's that partnership, that private partner, public partnership, where uh, the foundation has raised a thousand or two thousand dollars. And Eric, can you find, you know, mm -hmm. those right. additional funds? Can we do this and let him see because he has some latitude in his budget? Mm -hmm. So I think that's where that. I, I believe that that would be valuable to have Eric be part of this um, this process. In addition, he needs to start thinking in terms of, uh, I, I don't have the dollars in my budget to yeah. allocate. I mean, I was thinking about perhaps adding an art component into mine. <laughs> I don't know how far it would get, but I know that with him being responsible sure. for the maintenance, right. ongoing maintenance, that this is where we probably need to go. Yeah. Okay. So, it, so, so I'm, 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 I'm hearing a couple things, though, that, that A, we think we need to just give a quick Thumbs up, thumbs up to um, um, Diamond Alley. Um, B that we need uh, probably two commissioners to join with the foundation to um, form an ad hoc committee and set up a meeting with with Eric. And um, do we need to vote that we give our blessing to this ad hoc committee to to go forward, or we we expect the ad hoc committee to come back? and to give us a report that then we say please we vote as the commission to send the whole report to the council mm -hmm. is that well what? yes and I, that is fine i think that it was already in motion though because of with the approval of the hands part of the motion was to look at the overall needs for all existing pieces of, of artwork and i think that we've got that now yeah um, now you've identified another item 
that requires it. So I'm not sure it has to be anything other than this is the next step. Mm -hmm. I, what I was thinking is that bring Eric Gustafson to the to one our next meeting, whether that be the special meeting or the quarterly meeting in in October, and uh, be able to hear from him. Mm -hmm about his budget and uh, be able to address it with, for the for the full commission to talk to him. Okay. I think that would be valuable and then... Does there need to be a, any kind of working group in the interim to sort of show him this and talk about a few things? Well, I, I don't think so because you've got, Monica, you're still on the foundation right. mm -hmm. board and so, and she's a commissioner. I think... Um, so the only tricky part here is that we're talking about pieces of art and so um, with the hands, for instance, before any of it came here or anywhere else, um, we realized that the artist has first right of refusal. Sure. Right. So what took us the longest in dealing with the hands was getting a hold of the artist and saying, do you want to repair your own artwork? And then finally she said no, and then we started seeking um, other, other bids and other avenues. So like for the Diamond Alley, the um, Kathleen Narudi um, may want to come and just glue those tiles back on. So that's the tricky part being art, and so that would be the one thing, the way that the foundation can help out with the legwork and help Eric out in terms of telling him the artist wants to do it and their quote is X, or the artist doesn't want to do it, you got some guys who can climb up there and glue the tiles on. You know, so the, that's, the, that's the tricky logistical piece that's sure. different than other right. maintenance needs. And so we haven't contacted that particular artist yet? On no, because now. we were waiting for the commission or council, we were waiting for direction to start but first of all, which to start on, because I mean, we could go through and contact all these artists and say, where do you stand on this? But depending on when they're going to do it, they, you know, if we're starting with the, the Diamond Alley um, arches, um, we could say it needs immediate repair. Are you available? Are you willing to do this? And they could say yes, no. We could go from there. But that's that's the that's the logistical piece that's tricky for this mm -hmm. for this topic. And if, if I could suggest yeah. that. We pursue both because we're mandated to do the list, and I think the list still needs to tweak. And I would like it's to volunteer to work with you guys. Yeah, it's almost done. And my Maybe. field is much yeah. things like my field is repair, yeah. construction, and I can maybe lend some of that. And we just concurrently do Diamond Alley and the list because the list has been mandated, but Diamond Alley is deteriorating and costs are going to rise. We yeah. just go both of them until we can maybe touch base with Gustafson prior to the meeting or at the meeting, and we get these issues, the list finalized, and maybe even a couple of quotes on whether the artist wants involvement by our next meeting. Okay. So um, I, I think it's if we're inviting Eric to the next special meeting, though, um, it's important that he has the list in hand prior to the Absolutely. Prior right. To, prior even, to the if, even if it's subject to change, it'll have the bulk of it. Yeah, on there. I'll forward this to you because I just got this like two days ago. So they, okay. they keep going out and finishing because we know how important it is. Yeah. And so um, I'm, it might even be complete. I just haven't taken the time to count them all out. Yeah. Look, yeah. Because I'm still surprised to see the plow at the top. I think that needs discussion. But, um, but, but the rest of it looks pretty the, good. The, yeah. The so yeah. Um, at special meeting, Eric will come. Um, depending but, upon the date, and I'll, I'm going to give you both dates. Okay. Uh, so. We could do it in August or September, and I can check to see. Um, do you want to pick the date by because so few commissioners are here? You want to pick the date by email? Um, or we I, tentatively I can go do, now. I can do that. August 9th. So knowing that we could hold the second Wednesday free, mm -hmm. that's what I've kind of gone with with the same time frame. That way, meetings. Right. I've got a block of time. So August 9th or September 13th. And I could check with Eric on both of those, and then uh, I could shoot that information out to the commissioners. If he's available for both, maybe I send that out and say we want to hold a special meeting okay. to discuss the items that require the full commission. Can you make it? Great. So I can do that. And then if you, the ad hoc, uh, because it's not a, it's not a standing committee and everything else. You guys can just give direction that there's a committee. If it's, if it's. Let's just say it's the two of you working with the foundation yeah. and communicating with Eric. Right. Okay. And then we'll, yeah. we'll and then we'll agendize it for the so we need to be communicating with Debbie September. and then she helps us communicate with Eric. Perfect. Yep. Great. Thank you. And I've Thank you for coming. Eric in the past. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is. He's been very supportive of the artwork. Um, that's mm -hmm. great. 
moving yeah. along then? It would be, mm -hmm. Ultimately, it would be great to get him to a place where he can kind of do some of that stuff because he's kind of familiar with it and then give directive to us and so we can minimize it. Right, so, you'll know from him yeah. what the processes need to be right. in order to expedite it. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Poet Laureate. Yes, for Senator Jack, your coffee is falling over. But it's not leaking oh. yet. Good lunch. Don't yeah, lose your good lunch. Mm -hmm. um, oh, right. Yeah, I asked for that to be agendized because at the Art Summit back on um, February 1st, seems like a long time ago, February 1st, Life 17, many lifetimes ago, but one of the concepts that came out of that or was suggested was to have a, uh, I think it was or Oroville had done it, but I'm not sure. I don't remember what city suggested it, and the notes didn't reflect, but the idea of a simple thing that could be done to generate, or hopefully to generate enthusiasm for the arts, to keep arts um, in the news before the public, is to have a poet laureate. And it seemed to me like, well, gosh, that's something Chico should do. It sounds easy. Of course, it's never as easy as it seems, but um, I wanted to get it on the agenda, so perhaps, if nothing else, um, we could put out, well, assuming we want to have or consider having a poet's Poet Laureate, um, then we'd, um, I think, it, we would then, I would think, have to agendize it um, and get, if we get approval for the concept, we need to decide to, if we're going to have one, what are the criteria to select one, what's the process for selecting, um, and uh, how do we nominate people for it. Um, all those process issues would need to be decided, criteria, but um, and who gets to weigh in on the criteria. So I guess I would want to have it agendized and publicized if we want to move forward um, so we could get hopefully community members here to report in on um, what they think the criteria should be and we can discuss the criteria ourselves uh, and, and how to name the, the award. Uh, and if we get lucky, we'll, um, if we don't want to make that approval today to, of concept, I guess I was thinking if we could prove today to put out sort of like a public request for input uh, on this topic and then decide at the next meeting um, whether we're going to do it and, publish it and approve the criteria and then push them forward. Uh, I'm not being very articulate. I'm not a poet. <laughs> uh, but um, I think it's something that needs to be done. It'll take work. I'm certainly willing to do the work because as a venture, you know, as a commission member. But really, the idea is not for me to do the work. To get the public to weigh in on this is a great idea. We'd like to have a poet laureate. Uh, here's here's the factors we should look at. The criteria is it poet laureate is normally the election cycle. When I think about on the federal level, you know, how often? Anyway, I'd like to have it agendized for consideration, uh, and then before the next meeting. However, we reach out to arts groups and the public, make a request for information on that topic. May yeah, I suggest that we use our mailing list from the arts and uh, the arts uh, state of the arts. We have a large mailing list of organizations and the Facebook page, and we just ask for feedback uh, prior to our October 11th meeting. And again, if you want to make a motion along that line, support it, or you want to hold off on a motion. No, I, I want to keep it moving. And, uh, just as an aside, one thing I wanted to show, I'll wait on that. Yes, I move, or uh, I'd like to move that we uh, agendize for our next meeting uh, consideration of the um, criteria and process for uh, establishing a poet laureate for, for the city of Chico, uh, and that as part of a first step to implement that, we send out a a request for input from the mailing list from the um, Arts Summit and anyone else who's on our mailing list. Okay. I second. Uh, yes, all, you call. All in favor? All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 I guess that's unanimous, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Opposed? So, Except. so we need, we need a <clears throat> We need a thoughtful proposal request. Request that that can that so can I'll be sent out. I'll take the first shot at that. You want to take your first shot and at that? And then uh, send it to you and you Debbie just, or you, to yeah. Debbie. You, you can't, can't send it to the whole group. I can send it to one. Yeah. Send it to Debbie and she could send it out to the whole group. And then one other suggestion that I have is that perhaps 
uh, reaching out to Asia from the Chico ER and get yeah, her to do a story. We can send them the agendas, but if there's a specific need that you really want to encourage them to write something about that you're looking to put this event, she may do a, a cover story for it. So it never hurts to actually reach out to them. So the, the, yeah, the papers, both papers would be supportive. Does the does the or would that come after the? Well, I'm, I'm, my question is that that ultimately what we're doing is recommending to the council to approve creating a poet laureate for the city of Chico. So mm -hmm. are, are we first asking for input from? from creative organizations and, and, and whomever on what the criteria needs to be and then creating this that then at our next meeting we approve for recommendation to go to the council to officially create the position of Poet Laureate. Well, good question. But maybe I'm not fully appreciating the uh, authority of what we can do or the politics of what we can do but I view this as the Arts Commission's thing. This is something the Arts Commission's going to do. We're going to create it, and we're going to recognize it. And we're the vehicle for the public to promote the arts. This is like a low-cost, non-budget item, essentially, except for our time. But now, maybe, so in answer to your question, I didn't think of this as going to the council, other than here's something we did, mm -hmm. depending upon how the public weighs in. This is an Arts Commission thing. We want to do things. I would like to see that person up there with the benedictions on a regular basis as well <laughs> at the beginning of council meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but but if you, but but if you do it without the council, will you ever see them up there? You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think the council and stamp the of approval is. I sort of see this as good. like the arts awards that we give out on the, on the same level as creating. You know, in addition to the the. You know, artist of the year or the art, arts awards that, that we that we that we recognize, we also recognize and put at that same council level. You know, with the certificate from the mayor. And I'll for you. I'll get together with Debbie to get the wording right. But so I will wordsmith this uh, or attempt to within the context of developing a proposal to take to council for their imprimatur. Uh, <laughs> that definition helped. Well, and I think if we just, uh, you know, we're going to agenda it at the next meeting. Regular meeting. And you guys will be, if you can put an outline together, uh, that's what I'm thinking might yeah. be beneficial and have a more discussion so you know exactly what you're going to send to the to the council. Right. Another ad hoc. Kitty, did you have a comment? Yes, I did, because the, the idea of making the poet laureate from the city of Chico right. is extremely wonderful. And, and all the places, remember, we used to have the art minute and there is the benediction or that portion of the council meeting well there should maybe be an art minute with the council but even if there weren't even if there weren't to have it be for the city of chico involves the city of chico in recognizing and being a part of something that says we support art it's very it, that's a brilliant idea i think it's brilliant and, uh, on, that note, not, uh, on that note, not <laughs> including it with the Mayor's Free. Arts Awards is good too because we should have things going at That's various right. times of the year. Yes. Yeah, we don't want to just wrap it up in that. Yeah. So. And my, my aside is, I recently got back from a trip to South Dakota uh, and Eastern Pennsylvania, and uh, one of the things they had in Eastern Pennsylvania, you know, it was a very small town called Lewiston, happened to be called, now was there, so they had some money. But they called it the Poetry Path, and um, wow. can't wait to see the poem, but it was about 10 poems on a plaque through a park. And it seemed like maybe ultimately mm -hmm. that caused money to get people to sponsor, I'll include the spent materials, mm -hmm. uh, sponsor a Poetry Path to go with our Poet Laureates. So get the that Park, piece park of and the Playground year. Commission to pay for it. By the way, I have to go. Right. So right. With, with me leaving goes our quorum. Um, and our chair. Yeah. yeah. We have a um, um, so we have. Uh, we didn't get to three of the items on our our list, which we will move to the special session, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, and we'll bring back the poet laureate. And I know that the um, the arts awards um, typically happens in October in in honor of Arts and Humanities Month. And that's where part of was bringing it up now. Is that correct? Right. Right. So I have the forms, and I just wanted to go over the process. Sure. Yeah. 
So maybe we think we have time to do that for a yeah. special meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Stephen, or either you or the, the foundation, would I'd like to get that in, that information distributed on the granting, because I've been peppered by people. Okay. Who both recipients and applicants and non, and people are they, they keep time. asking me what's going on with that, and I don't have the answers. Well, I know that the letters went out. Mm -hmm. from the yeah. So it's public foundation. notice. So. I believe that everyone who was awarded um, you can refer them to should know. And, right, and I but if it's a public them. notice, we should know. Yeah. And if I'm getting asked, I would like to know. And, and I do know, and I can tell you. Yeah, um, if you if you have a printout of that, you can forward it. Um, I don't have a printout. I just have my notes from the, from the, from the meeting. meeting. So, um, so, well, so maybe Giovanni can enter. give me yeah. a report. Yes, you, oh, can, you, can, you can work with Giovanni. That's so what the process right. isn't right. with the city any longer. It yes. is actually with the North right. Valley Community Foundation. So while the mayor signed the letters, mm -hmm. either indicating they were um, accepted or not, uh, we don't have the details that went into any of that. And we don't have the details into the process. Um, and, okay, the list. And, and I, you're right, I, I could just go to Giovanni. Um, and I, I'm, I'm in contact with him, and I'll tell him. And I, I mean, I can, I can type it into an email and send it to you. Be great. Yeah. I'd like to know who the applicants, all the applicants were, not just the recipients. Yeah. You know, and that's really what it comes down to, because not it. much else has happened anyway. Right. Thanks. I've got it. And so I'll follow up with an email regarding an August 9th or a September 13th special meeting. Okay. Right now we're adjourned to October 11th. Correct. Until that happens. Oh, yeah. Until that happens, October 11th. And as soon as we pick a new date, I'll send out a broadcast to all people on our mailing list at the special meeting date. Yes, yeah. and please come on the art tour. I'm uh, leading the next tour, which is at the end of the month. It's um, on the 29th, I believe. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. And I'll give you private tours. We're adjourned. If you, if you don't think that you can't miss the public floor. Um, <laughs> by law. Okay. Is there any business from the floor? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, all right. All right. Well, right. With no business from the floor. <laughs> We are adjourned. And you're just going to walk out here right up onto the stage and start. Does anyone have a